clock situation just to the end was was different. I, I've never had a clock go off the board on me um, like that. So, you know, the second down, you know, we we're, we're trying to, you know, chip away and just get a shorter shorter field goal. And so we, we were we were in an attempt to uh, a third down play and then kicking on fourth was the time frame we were in, 17 seconds, I think. So we were right on the threshold. You know, we get into these two minute drills, you have thresholds, one minute, three, 30 seconds, 17 seconds. So we were right at the threshold there of our operation. And so we had a, we had a personnel, um, you, know, um, you know, one of our players came off that, you know, shouldn't have come off and just communication there. So then we were just going to run it down. But the, the clock I was watching uh, went off the board and then, you know, Clark Kellen had, uh, I think he said a camera, he, he, he got blocked by a camera guy. So the communication was great from up top. And, you know, and obviously you want to you call that time out between three, you know, three and four seconds. Um, I haven't the first freaking idea what that means, but okay, exactly. I, I like Mike exactly. McCarthy. And, I, and, I, and yeah. I like what Charles Robinson had to say about it on Yahoo. Uh, sports in his column, uh, Charles, who's you know one of the most positive guys I know, uh, definitely looked at the bright side and saw this as something of a of a of a example of the Cowboys, dare I say, it, character and chemistry that they were able to beat a talented Chargers team on the road, and Greg Zerline in particular saved the day and save Mike McCarthy from being skewered uh, even more than he is being skewered right now. Like I mean, right. you know. Everybody that watched that was like, what the hell are you doing? They could have, I mean, to leave it on Zerline to kick a 56 yard field goal. I mean, this could be a completely yeah, different 56. conversation today, Charles, but 50, it's not. 56. 56. 56, y'all. 56. 56. Back, off back surgery. All yeah. the last week. 56. So, uh, Charles, expound on that why you felt like this, you know, in spite of all the confusion at the end of the game, this could actually be something of a watershed moment for the Cowboys. Well, first and foremost, I was looking forward to Mike's explanation of what happened there because, you know, you have, it's funny because like Tony, even Tony Romo is sitting there like, what are they doing? <laughs> like, what are they, they could have had, you know, <laughs> multiple other opportunities here. And then I listened to what Mike said, and I must have listened to that clip four or five times trying to determine exactly how Mike was trying to explain it. And the one thing I couldn't get over was you knew you were going to run it with Tony Pollard at that point. So the second he gets tackled, don't you just call the timeout right then? Like, it, what? why do you need yeah. to know exactly what you're, hey, we want to get to 17 or we have plans, you know, at these certain second markers? You know you're running it to the middle of the field. Call the timeout, and then you don't have to worry about the personnel groupings. You don't have to worry about the clock, you know, off the field. You don't have to, I, I don't know. It was, as you said, had Greg Zerline, who, by the way, has a history of back problems, um, not come in and kicked a Greg Zerline of like three or four years ago field goal, like, you know, Legatron field goal. We're talking mm -hmm. about Mike McCarthy, potentially talking about Mike McCarthy this week going, okay, you're Owen to what the hell happened there. Remember how, you know, you had clock management issues in green Bay, all these different things. Instead, you know, they walk off with a win. You get the, you know, Greg Zerline had a rough week the first week. He bounces back this this week and, and saves the day. You were without two starting defensive ends, including Demarcus Lawrence with a broken ankle. Um, Micah Parsons, who's an exquisite linebacker as a rookie, has been a great draft pick for them. Had to flex the defensive end. Your right tackle, Lyle Collins, who was going to be responsible for Joey Bosa in this game, um, suspended for five games. Um, Michael Gallup's down. Uh, for a month, I guess to me, the, the positive was in, in past scenarios, maybe under Jason Garrett, you know, this is, this is a moment where they fall apart and they go, well, you know, superior team, you're on the road, even though it was basically your crowd on the road um, in SoFi. Uh, this is just the same old Cowboys where they really need to turn something around in a moment that's dire, something fails them. And, and, you know, even the special teams, for the last few seasons has been a question um, in terms of the, the clutch moments when they absolutely needed that kick. Now you got this guy who comes in and changes the narrative. So I think if you're Dallas, you walk out of there going, hey, Dak played pretty well. When we needed him that last drive, he took us, I think it was like 11 plays and 49 yards or whatever, and probably could have taken them further had the clock management not been botched by the coaching staff mm -hmm. and gotten them even closer. I felt like that last drive and the way they used Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott 
the way that, you know, Terrence Steele filled in um, at right tackle. Zach Martin, by the way, I, he's probably the best offensive lineman in football. I've never seen a guy who can take um, an, an, an offensive scheme from the opener not being there with COVID to week two. Um, now, granted, you know, Vita Vea wasn't there, you know, in the middle of the line for the Chargers, but still, Zach Martin was crushing guys. I mean, it was a, it was a blocking clip. And he may very well be the best offensive line in football at guard, no less. Yeah. All right. So, so Charles, I, I need to go back to Mike McCarthy here for a second. This is really, I mean, this disturbed me. It always disturbed me. Uh, okay. What he said didn't quite curl, it, it, it just didn't curl. All right. So, when coaches tell players to be prepared for anything, so if if uh, if you got if you're slipping on the turf, make sure you got an extra pair of cleats. If uh, if if you're if there's crowd noise, you got to be ready be ready to deal with that. Don't coaches have to be prepared for this situation? Is it a headset situation where somebody else in upstairs has to say, "Hey, Mike, what are we doing here?" Uh, I is or I just feel like that's inex. Yeah. It's inexcusable. Like nobody wants to hear what Mike McCarthy said after the game. He now we listened to it because they won it, but losing the game and falling to zero and two, I just think it's inexcusable. It would have no. It would have the entire tenor of the week would have been changed. You know that was if they are zero and two this week, he's getting crushed. And and really, it's funny because you can even look at the snapshot on Twitter. Look at social media, just in the little four minute span that kind of covered that last couple of minutes, you know, the, really the last minute of that game and he's getting destroyed. And then Greg Zerline hits this, you know, immaculate field goal. And then all of a sudden it's sort of like, well, okay, we'll lay off a little bit. Like I'll give you a good example. Clarence Hill, Chili, love him. Chili's my guy. Okay. Um, covers the, the Dallas Cowboys for the Fort Worth Star Telegram. Chili's mm -hmm. piece was this super positive. Hey, Dak Prescott, this is what you paid him <laughs> for. Like, and I get it. Like, I totally understand that. But I'm going to tell you right now, if they don't make that field goal, Chili's writing something different. Oh, he, he, you know, oh, this oh, oh, Clarence will roast him. Clarence, yeah. Clarence, will, Clarence will hesitate to roast him. <laughs> he, he, he will not resonate. Res Speaking of getting roasted and Twitter and things that people don't want to hear to Urban Meyer, I don't know who thought it was a ah. good idea. Woo. On week two, <laughs> after they lose to the Broncos to post hang in there with us. We're going to get better. The one thing about Jacksonville in the 904 go to sleep knowing there's not going to be any group working harder to get this thing flipped. I don't know if this is like if he if he called up Tim Tebow and said, Hey, Tim, what do you think? Like, could, you know, can you workshop this with me? I don't know what it is. But like, <laughs> you want to talk about something backfiring. Um, I, I, I tried to be positive about Jackson, but I know young young teams young quarterbacks in particular have growing pains. I get it. Um, but now I'm wondering was is their roster just that bad which sidebar I didn't believe it to be but who am I or are they just poorly prepared and poorly coached slash the culture in Jacksonville is just not conducive to them being more competitive than they've been against Houston and Denver, not exactly world beaters. Oh man. Um, I think there's, I think there's a lot there. I, I don't think it's like one thing. I know it's easy to point at urban because he's the guy at the forefront and urban's made a lot of mistakes up until this point, but the offense wasn't and he's functioning. A now. He's an easy target, easy target. Right. Absolutely. And then, you know, you go through the mess with USC where he gets asked that question. And even the way he answered that, He's kind of staring at his feet, you know, but his demeanor, the way he answered that, you're just like, dude, come on, man, what are you doing? Like, it's staring to the camera, be commanding, be this guy that you were sold as, which is this program builder, the culture builder. And so far, the program and culture build is not, it's just not there, that presence that Urban carried at Ohio State. And, and I think he's still bridging a couple of different things in Jacksonville in that you can't run a chaos program in the NFL. You can run that at Florida. You can run it at Ohio State because you can manage it and everyone listens to you. But you get to the NFL level and players will question you. Personnel people will question you. Reporters will question you. There's no sacred lambs in the NFL, okay? And so he's getting, you know, he's getting the sharp end of the stick at every turn right now. But, the, but I think what is complicating this and making it worse is that you have a guy in Trevor Lawrence who... Um, he's had moments, but by and large, I feel like Trevor has 
you can cut up a few throws here and there each game and go, okay, this, this looks special. This is the guy, this is a great throw. That's a great throw, but there's also a lot of big misses. Um, what he went 34 and two at Clemson. He's already, you know, got, mm. he's matched his career college total loss in two weeks in Jacksonville and none of them, neither game has been close. Neither game's really been one where you thought the offense had it together. I think a good example, like, let me give you an example. Their running back situation, James Robinson. What are you doing? Like, what are you doing with this guy? Because you're not really utilizing him out of the backfield the way that he was last year. You're not utilizing him as a running back. Is Carlos Hyde your guy? I understand you lost Travis Etienne. I get that. But to not have it, at the very least, particularly with a rookie quarterback, not have the mindset of, hey, we got to at least, let's, let's take some heat off him. Let's make sure we're running the ball. Let's balance this out a little bit and not put it on his shoulders, because I feel like they're already doing that with Lawrence. It's sort of like he has to play hero ball already mm -hmm. and be perfect already to kind of keep Jacksonville competitive, and that's not happening. So um, I, he is smart, I think, in if, if the design of, as you said, taking to social media is to sort of look outward and say, hey, no one ever respects Jacksonville. Stick with us. It's us against them, and try to turn this into – you know, battening down the hatches in Jacksonville and no one ever gives us a, an opportunity. That's great, but you better hope everybody in Jacksonville is on board with this. And I already kind of am seeing people go, uh, you know, it seems like the fans are like, man, I don't know. Like, is this, is this, just, is this just wrong? Like, why is nothing working here? Um, it's, uh, it, we, uh, it, Urban's going to be like this weekly thing we can talk about. I don't think this yeah. is going to get better. I don't see anything in the first two weeks that makes me look like the preseason wasn't real and the preseason was awful. Yeah, it was. And I, and I try to be optimistic, but it's getting harder and harder. And if nothing else, just read the room. Um, hey, uh, let's do this. Like we usually do on Mondays with you, man. It's just too much to cover in, in, one, in yeah. one block. Let's go ahead and take this break. Uh, reset top of the hour as we'd like to do around here and then uh, and pick it up later. You can settle something between us when it comes to the Ravens and the Chiefs. Plus, oh, I like get into like the teams that that are doing well with unexpected people at the quarterback position. So, Charles Robinson, gonna stick around with us. Let's see, and let's see, let's see how Mike Smith asks a question. Let's see if you ask a nice Sawatsky question. Make it lean, make it neutral, so Charles Robinson doesn't know where you stand. <laughs> that's not that's not what that's I do my challenge. here. This, see, I'm not I'm not interviewing. I'm having a conversation. See, there's interviews, oh, there's okay, conversation. Okay. You, okay. you got to right. pick which one you want it to be. If you want to be an interview, open it and neutral. That's called rationalizing. That's, that's rationalizing. Nope, rationalizing. that's the science. I get it. Patrick, your thoughts on, the, on your last uh, offensive drive that, you know, turned into a turnover? Yeah, we, uh, we, got in the, we got in the field of range pretty quickly there. Uh, and then we were just we were pretty much just trying to get down as close as we could to let Bucker uh, kick the field goal. And the dude made a good play. He was getting blocked. He threw his hand out and hit, the, hit it directly on the ball. So, I mean... Um, we were executing. They made a they made a play, and you lose games when teams make plays like that at the end of games. Uh, all right, Mike, uh, Charles, I want to talk about last night? And Charles, what did you see? Kansas City, Baltimore, Lamar Jackson going to the game. Owen three versus the Chiefs. They got a win last night. What is the significance? of that win? Um, well, I think there's significance on both ends. You know, I think for, let's start with Kansas City. Um, you better figure out what you're doing running the football. I mean, Clyde Edwards, Elair, we've been waiting, you know, now for, for him to click in and be the guy. Um, they skinny down the roster um, behind Patrick Mahomes in terms of that backfield fully committing to him. And frankly, it was a bad fumble. Like it really was. There was no way to really get around it ball gets punched out but I again I think that in that situation knowing what they were positioning themselves to do you cannot fumble in that scenario and if he doesn't fumble in that scenario this is sort of like the Cowboys situation we'd be having a whole different conversation again about how well Lamar Jackson made these mistakes um you know he was good but just not good enough could not quite come back and and beat Pat Mahomes and oh by the way don't ever give Pat Mahomes time at the end of the game instead Elair fumbles and it, it, it almost like we it, that becomes the greatness of Lamar's moment and that and then picking up the the one yard and fourth and one which I thought 
from a flip side, um, I think Lamar, from a mental standpoint, it has to feel really good to have gone what I think 0 and 3 against against Patrick Mahomes and and the Chiefs, and to fail, and this time, not only come back, um, not only come back in a fashion where it was very much Lamar Jackson who was who was carrying everything. He was the guy who was finding the creases. I don't know that I want to see him continue to play like this the, the the balance of his career, but then also have that moment where it was interesting that John Harbaugh called it out where he had to know cameras would see him to say, Lamar, do you want to go for it on fourth and one? There's a lot of layers. It takes stones to make that call, less so because you're it's fourth and one, more so because you just did it for the world to see. You just asked your quarterback a question for which there's only one answer. Lamar could only answer that one way. Yes, of course. Like, because if he says like, no, like, no, everything is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. There's only one answer to that question. He puts it out there on blast for everybody in the world to see, which probably should have been a more private moment between him and his quarterback. And he set Lamar up for this situation where if there's a fumbled center snap, if there's anything else that goes wrong in that scenario, now people are now looking at Lamar and sharing <laughs> what should have been a coach decision at that point. Yeah. But the flip side is it pays off big when, you know, he picks up two yards right. and, and seals the deal. So, you know, I think it's somewhat meaningful for both teams, but again, I, I, I want everybody to just hold back here and say it's week two. Um, the Chiefs still have not figured out how to not only stop, I think, the run, but also design a Jordan Rules package just for Lamar Jackson, which I think is pretty clear. They need to do mm -hmm. that. They need to design a defense that you don't yeah. employ against any other team, really, except for Lamar Jackson. And you could add this to, you know, the legend of Lamar with him running to the bathroom and running back out to save the day. You know? <laughs> um, and listen, for yeah. a while, it's not just the Chiefs. It's not just the playoffs, but also deficits. Is something that he has not made uh, right. a not a comeback. He has, has not been a career. comeback guy. Yeah, right. Exactly, exactly. So, um, moving now to the Panthers, and the reason I want to focus on the Panthers is Sam Darnold in particular, because Charles, you've obviously been all over uh, teams that were uh, in hot pursuit of Deshaun Watson in the offseason. The Panthers were at the front of the line because David Tepper did not believe yeah. that he had a true franchise quarterback. He just had somebody else's old franchise quarterback that mm. they decided to discard. Uh, I'll spare you the trash treasure, uh, you know, old saying here. But I'm wondering, you know, it's just two games, but Sam mm. Darnold's look really solid and just wondering if if he's giving them pause about whether or not they may have been fortunate enough to find their guy on the scrap heap as, as opposed to having to give up the world to get him. Long season. Long season. A lot of people felt good about Gardner Minshew. <laughs> Two games into the into the year last year, mm -hmm. thought Gardner Minshew could potentially, um, Mike, you know, be, be, the, be the savior. I look. I'll say this about Sam. His career. Um, it, it's it's. Uh, <laughs> all right. I love it. This is good. We're gonna, we're gonna revisit Gardner Minshew. I didn't I didn't know that was a thing on this show, but it is. I like that. Um, it's a long story. All right, it's a long so, story. I'll, so, I'll, I'll tell you so, privately. <laughs> so, 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 so Sam Darnold, look, after the Jets dealt him, um, you know, I had a chance to talk to someone in the front office, and I and I gave them every opportunity to do what a lot of teams do and make out like, hey, we just got this big steal, and you know, he, you know, kind of remember Joe Douglas. It wasn't his draft pick. I mean, he could have, you know, thrown dirt on the kid, and and the front office there was like, no, you know. He has ability. They're like, he he has, but this is, there are a couple of things happening here that have to develop in his game. Number one, mentally, he's been broken. The front office felt like that's partially our fault here because he got hit a lot. We did not protect, protect him well enough. And then Adam Gase was not really a good fit for how we wanted to Sam, how we want Sam Darnold to grow. Mm -hmm. And um, interestingly enough, when you kind of went through it, he was very much a first read quarterback when he was with the Jets. It was like he'd lock onto the first read, and then if it didn't work out, things went really poorly for Sam Darnold. He was not getting to second and third reads. I think part of that was because he was getting hit so much. Part of that was because, you know, he kind of said the whole, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing ghosts out there, that whole I'm thing. Seeing ghosts, I yeah. think, yeah, I think that was real. And so when I went through Carolina, 
I went into a practice where they were preparing to go on uh, to do joint practices with the Colts, sort of an abridged practice. Um, the defense looked great. Sam looked bad. He looked bad in the practice I was in. And afterward, I had a chance to sit down with someone um, in the front office, and I said, "Hey, <laughs> like, is this has this how this been? Is, is this how this has been going? Like, have I just missed something here?" And he said, "No, no, no. It was a bad practice day." He said, "He's." He is showing us the ability, and we brought up, we talked in length at length about the second and third read stuff. And he said, "No, he's getting there. We're seeing him start to process things and and be calm and not, you know, make throws too early, let yeah. things develop a little bit." And I was, I walked out going, "All right, we'll see." You know, I really had a lot of faith in that defense, and I really had a lot of faith in Brian Burns and a lot of things I was seeing. But I was like, I have no clue whether or not this is true about Sam Darnold. Two games in. Yeah, he looks like he's starting to do some things. You know, the, the rollout um, in, in yesterday's game, you know, he's rolling out. You're seeing him, you know, create space for himself between himself and the defense. Ability manipulate things has a little bit. never been an issue. The dude right. got wheels. The dude can make crazy throws. He just needed to get out of New York. It was a funky situation. I'm not going to say I told you so, and I'm not going to it's too early for regrets. Not even one letter. But nonetheless, he, I think he's going to join a long list of quarterbacks who – go to a different situation and become a different quarterback altogether. But you mentioned that Panthers defense and Jameis Winston got a face full of that Panthers defense yesterday. Now they were down what eight coaches because of COVID protocol five starters from week one. If you think I'm ahead of myself, I'm getting ahead of myself today. Charlie you should have seen me last week after Jameis drew five touchdowns. I, I'm pretty sure Jameis though is is somewhere between let's go. go I'm gonna go out on a limb. Go out on a limb. Yeah. He's somewhere between five touchdown passes and what we saw yesterday. Yes. He's somewhere yeah. in the middle. <laughs> yes. Is it safe He's, to say? But, but seriously, yes. what happened yesterday? The five, the five touchdown passes, particularly with the passing yardage, you know, I mean, it was like we had like 140 passing yards a week. I mean, like a, yeah, whatever the number was, it was, ridic- it was ridiculously low, barely got touched. We talked about that last week. And I think I said last week, like, we're going to find out really truly more about him when, when he has a four second. What happened this week? He had a four second. He got hit. He looked uncomfortable. He couldn't run the ball. They could not run the ball. Alvin Kamara, I think, got, you know, 12 touches, um, including like four catches, which is just, you know, it's, yeah, they, they, nothing was functioning on offense. And so to me, I think I'm with you. I think the reality is he's not what week one is. He's really not what week two is. He's going to be somewhere in the middle there. Now the ultimate question is, is he closer to week one or is he closer to week two? And now what can, you know, Sean Payton do to, yeah, that was bad. What, what can Sean Payton do? To, to adjust him. That was that was a Tampa pick, right? That's what we remembered seeing in Tampa when he was uncomfortable. And that's the problem. Um, and honestly, that's the problem. When he has, uh, when he throws bad passes, when he turns it over, when he struggles, immediately we want to say, oh, there's Jameis being Jameis. There's Jameis Jameis singing. I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying you're saying that, but I think even subconsciously, Charles, it's like, oh, see? Yeah, he, right. he, he, some things never change. He was right. under pressure. Every highlight we just showed just now, and that's just a couple. He was he was avoiding free rushers. He was under pressure. Most quarterbacks, if they're playing from behind and they're forced to pass, and the defense can pin their ears back, that's what you're going to get is bad throws. You're going to get turnovers. And so maybe he does need to be able to lean on the running game and lean on the defense more than he was able to do yesterday. Yes, they have to be. Look, they have to be able to run the football. Be good. Like, you know, M- Michael Thomas is very important for this team. Okay, it's still, I believe, an offense that when it was at its best, even with Drew Brees, it was streamlined through Alvin Kamara. Michael Thomas was on the field. Um, and, you know, again, you, when you when you look at them being down, the number of starters, the, the coaches, the COVID outbreak amongst the coaching staff, that all impacts things. It does. Like, there's no way you can get around that. So it's, it's a, you know, we probably were overboard on them in week one with the lack of pressure. We're probably going overboard in week two expecting the failure that we ultimately saw unfold in Tampa. Um, there's time now to work to work with Janus. And they're again, health is going to matter. Michael Thomas getting back into the fold is going to matter for this team. But I'll also say this. Carolina's defense is for real. That's not going away. They're going to be one of the better right. defenses moving forward. They're talented. Tampa, Tampa Bay, you know, um, Tom Brady, <laughs> Tom Brady's playing. I don't even know how to describe what is going on with this dude anymore? And they're going to have to put up points to stick with, you know, Tampa Bay with uh, I- I- inside the division. So, you know, maybe Atlanta, <laughs> at least you got Atlanta, I guess. Um, it's, 
he's going to have to figure this out. And, and, and Sean Payton's going to have to figure out how to make him comfortable um, getting hit and, and finding the right reads, maybe shortening it in certain scenarios. Um, and the one thing I would worry about going from Breeze to Jameis is that long ball and this idea that, okay, well, now we can just unleash it because now we have a quarterback who can throw it, who has the arm to put it down there like that. You don't want Jameis going back into that gunner mentality that he had in Tampa where Bruce Arians is like, yeah, hey, true. man, no risk it, no biscuit. And then Bruce was like, whoa, okay, maybe I should not have done that. <laughs> right. Like, this was the wrong <laughs> dude to play. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's like, he's like, oh, yeah, all like these other quarterbacks. Oh, like, Bruce Arians had all these other Hall of Fame quarterbacks where he could have that mentality. And then this kid's, like, right. turning it over nonstop. He's like, okay, that was a, that was a wrong thing to say here. Uh, not, not, now you see the offense at its extreme. Oh, I didn't know it could go that far left, man. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, bro. Right. Uh, yeah, that's not that's not really what I had in mind. But let me ask you this, man. And speaking of that, a lot of turnovers. Now, yesterday, yesterday, Zach Wilson had himself a day. You want to talk about some bad turnovers? <laughs> I, out of the four, uh, three of them were pretty just awful. I mean, just awful turnovers. So, yeah. Zach Wilson. Young quarterback, franchise savior, four interceptions. He saw a ghost. Sam Darnold saw a ghost. Now Darnold, only 24, 2 and 0. Is it too early to say, well, maybe the Jets should have followed Mike Smith's advice? Don't go for the quarterback at number two. Get you the best available player. Yep. Pin a Sewell or somebody like that. And build around Sam Darnold. Is it too early to go that route? Um, I again, we're two weeks in. I here's what scares me about the situation with Zach Wilson. Um, if I were a coach and I went into New York and in, in, you know with the Jets, or if I was a, a general manager, I really like Robert Salah. I really like Joe Douglas. I think they're both success guys. They will have success in this league. The one, the one downside though of being in New York with the Jets. And I swear to God, no one ever understands it until they get in there and it really falls apart. I would never, ever take a quarterback and start him as a, as a rookie. I would just say, you know what? I don't care. Like, we're not starting them. I would talk to ownership and just say, this is not this is not the team to start a rookie quarterback. This is not the market to start a rookie quarterback. There are maybe three or four markets in, in the United States like this where he will get devoured, where he will get eaten alive no matter what his skill set is, he cannot have a sustained period of failure, which is now what we've seen with Zach Wilson in back-to-back -back games. Um, some of it's on him because I think, you know, you play at BYU in a wide open offense, you have an arm like he does. And again, I use that phrase hero ball. Guys in college have to learn. They will learn quickly. I can't do that here. Like I can't gun us back into this. I can't just put it up and throw it as hard as I can, as deep as I can, and think someone's going to come up with it on the other end. Someone will. It's going to be the defense. Um, but look, Makai Becton's not playing hurt. Obviously, uh, that's not good for him. I think the skill positions around him are not still not fully fleshed out. Um, you know, I think the offensive line's still a work in progress. There's just I would almost look at Carolina. He, like Mike likes Darnold so much, and he likes Darnold's situation with Carolina. Well, let me tell you what Carolina did did right. Matt Rule and initially Marty Herney, then Scott Fitterer. The plan was, hey, let's let's just keep building out the the outside, and then we will stick the sun in the middle of the universe. But let's get the rest of it fixed first. We love the defense. Let's fix. You know, let's keep adding to that. We like these offensive pieces, the skill position pieces. Let's try to, try to figure out how we can tweak mm. the offensive line. Now we'll try with Sam and see if that works. And if Sam works, great. And if not, we will have a fully fleshed out team to drop an Aaron Rodgers in or someone else um, later. I almost think that has to be the Jets like approach it. because quarterbacks, I feel, yeah. I feel awful for the kid that you, you get booed your second game out and, yeah. and that the fan base First turns on home, you right? eventually. Yeah, and, and they just but, have turned on him with a vengeance, and I don't think anyone can survive. There are very few quarterbacks listen, Char that could have been taken and survived that. Yeah. Well, Charles Robinson, uh, we'll end with this. All of the focus was not on um, Zach Wilson yesterday. He wasn't the only Jet who struggled. I just want you to take a look at this. And you tell me, you watch this, and tell me that 
that the running back position is about to be extinct. Tell me running backs uh, don't matter anymore. Just watch this. Give me your gut reaction. What do you think of this, Mike Smith? Charles Robinson. This ain't a video game. <laughs> I don't want to tell you. This ain't, like, <laughs> this ain't, this ain't your wanna, backyard. Honestly, I don't want to tell you what I think of it. You don't want to. You don't want to know what, what I think of it, Charles. You answer the question. No, you don't want to know what I think of it. It's, no, it's irrelevant. I mean, it's it's you, immaterial and irrelevant what I think of it. You can't. You can't. Um, you, I Ooh. mean, it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. You can't have that many tackles. Embarrassing. It, it, and by the way, it wasn't. It wasn't Derrick Henry, right? Like, I mean, there are some backs where you're like Marshawn, Derrick Henry. Like, there are a couple of guys where you're like, okay, they can drag folks. They can bounce off folks. And no, I mean, that was that was that was terrible. And by the way, they absolutely did the right thing. I believe, truly believe, they did the right thing moving on from Jamal Adams, and and particularly for what they got. You know, but Jamal Adams is probably the type of player who, um, you know, you, you get the you get the right safety, you get the um, the right guy to step in the middle of something. There, he stops a running back in that situation. But so, I don't know, man. So, hold, hold, it's, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Charles, I, we got to know, Mike Smith. What are you what, what are you saying? What do you mean? I don't want to know what you think of it. What do you think of it? No, 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 no. You'll turn down. You don't really turn want to down a tackle. You, you really want to have this conversation? Yeah, I do. I do. do you want really want to have this conversation? Yeah, I do. I'm, I want to know it. I really I want, want to have it. I want, I want your. I want your top. Charles, you don't want to have this conversation. Uh, you know. Okay. All right. No. All right. I, Listen. I, I try I to be efficient with my commentary. I try to pick my spots. Okay. Here's what I think about it. I wish that were Ramondre Stevenson because the reason why I should have stayed away from fantasy football is this because is all I can think about when I watch football now is I see Charles. It's your fault because you took. An addict, and you put me, you expose me back to this narcotic, oh, and so I can't man. even enjoy the games now because I'm thinking about how Ramondre Stevenson wow. is inactive. I'm thinking I about how bad my team looks. I, I, that's what I'm thinking about, Charles. <laughs> I, so I don't want to watch <laughs> Damian Harris. I'm not a Patriots fan. I don't want to watch Damian Harris go off when I overdrafted a dude that's had one a touch and one fumble and, and is inactive the next game. That's what I'm thinking about. So you ask, right. that's what's on my mind when I see that, Michael. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank well, you I, for I, poking I, at well, it. Well, Mondays what. are miserable for me. Charles knows how, Charles, tell Ooh. Michael how much work I put into remodeling my team this past week. <laughs> I remodeled my team this past week yeah, and I can't crack 100. Damn it. His entire roster already. Like it's a, other than Travis oh, Kelsey, he, I feel like he's, he's, so he's turned over his entire team. You're so All impatient, right. bro. He, the season just started. You tell everybody else. Hey, look, he tell everybody else. He come on TV. Tell everybody else. Every other teammate. Listen, it's two games. We can't overreact to it. But you overreacted after a game. I know it when I see it. Football. I know it when I what see it. What game? I know it when I see it. I, I, my no, my draft sucked, and my team is uh, ass. Why do that? And I needed I told you to that. move on from these players. <laughs> Both of y'all told me that. Both of y'all told me that. I might just, you know what? I'm gonna just rename my fantasy team for the tenth time, Charles. My fantasy <laughs> team name is Ass. That's what I'm gonna call it. That's just gonna be the name of my team. By the way, because it's way, just he, that bad. He is not being hyperbolic. He is literally renaming his team <laughs> I know, like I know, seven I or saw, eight times every I time I go in. I'm I like, couldn't believe yeah. it. I'm like, who is this new team? It looked like, you know what, Charles? <laughs> it looked like an auto draft. It looked like an auto draft roster. From somebody oh. who really didn't <laughs> not even before. not even auto draft would have done better. The auto draft would have done better. Oh. That's, that's a compliment. Auto, don't disrespect auto it draft. So bad. It was a terrible draft. I drafted are 16 you? players. I think I got seven or eight of them on the team still. Are, are you changing your we, are you for real? Are you changing your team name because you're like, if I keep doing this, of course he will. It'll it'll keep people off, but they won't know it's me. Because if I keep changing it, I can hide. I can somehow no, hide my I'm identity. Doing it because I just need something to do. You have no idea how much I'm just scrolling, looking Mike, at rosters, Mike, including yours, Mike, trying to figure Mike, out what kind of trade I can listen, make. And I felt so Mike, good going into this. No, game. Mike. Mike oh is like God. Mike is like the Fletch of our league. He has a disguise for everything. Every 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 time you you log in, there's a new Mike's Mike's team's wearing a wig or it's in a doctor's coat. <laughs> what is what is the name, Doctor? It's Rosen. It's Rosen. Rosen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry, God. Mike. Uh, I'm sorry. To, I didn't I know did, that was going to be a trigger. I told thing. you you didn't want to but know. Hey, if this makes you, I told, if this makes you feel better, I, we, we were talking about reality. Better, I told you you didn't want to know. It's not Ramondre Stevenson's fault. It's a trifling coaching staff that punished him 
for a fumble that maybe didn't even happen. They should have they should have replayed that. They should have challenged that. I'm not even sure uh. he fumbled still, and they're holding it against him. I'm sorry, Mike. I hope I hope the trades work out for you. Hope your buddy no, Charles Robinson will come through Just listen, uh, and offer you a lifeline. Good. For the record, I tried to take that in, in, into just talking about real football and keep it away from Mike and his open and his open wounds. But Michael Holly was like, "No, we're going there. We're gonna. This is what this entire yeah. thing was for." <laughs> Monday. This was is just, that, Yeah. Well, thank you, Joe. Yeah. Appreciate Brother, that, you for, for spending that, so much time. Was, we can that, go to we can go to break now. I need to go. I need that, to go collect myself. Go ahead, Charles. That Michael Holly. That was Joe Pesci walking into the empty room, going, "Oh, I'm, I'm getting made today." <laughs> No, you're not getting me. <laughs> oh, oh no! Oh, oh no! <laughs> Bro, oh, like no. Mondays are miserable for me. I hate Mondays. It's like that, it just affects my mood way too much. Thanks a lot, Charles. I was minding my own business. Hey, you want to come back in the Super League? Now I'm like driving myself crazy trying to crack a hundred points. Are you oh, are you in last place in the entire league? Are you in last place? Entire no, league? He's not. Fewest no, points? I'm owing oh, I'm owing two and I'm I'm trash. Listen, if I'm in it, I'm in it to win it. If I, I don't play to play. I'm not I'm not here to donate my money to Charles in the game. I'm here to win. And I, I got no shot of winning. I got no by shot. By the way, by the way, he hasn't paid yet, so <laughs> he's not donating anything yet. You know I'm oh, good really? for it. Oh, why, why, you, why you got to put that out in public like that? Yeah, right. why, why you got to say that? Oh. You know I'm good for it. You Pay know, the man. Really? He's in arrears. Pay the man. Come on. You hold up he the lead. Zell. You hold no, up. he was in Zell. No, he was in Zell, and I, I, I use Venmo and PayPal. I got the point I got is not even to, is to get the the point is to get the money back. The point I, 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 I it's you hold I'm loaning you the money to get it back. That's I got the band. That's the idea. This is a true story. I got banned from PayPal and and now I'm banned for life. <laughs> Legitimately, I'm banned. That's why we don't have PayPal oh, this tell, year. Tell me that story when I call you later to try to beg you to yeah. make a trade with me. Okay. I'm not gonna. Hey, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. Thank you, Charles. Rolling that one out. All right, guys. Take care. All right. See you later, man. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave, and be sure to watch us. 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.